Welcome back, everyone. Today we have Sean from Lush Balloons. Hey, hey. He is a the husband from the husband and wife team. They serve the greater Sacramento region, and you may have seen some of their amazing installations at the King Stadium or at Golden, oh, sorry, Golden One Center, I guess now, um, or even at Thunder Valley Casino, or maybe you've been catching Sean's awesome dance moves on <laughs> social media. <laughs> Thanks for being here today with of us, course. Sean. Thank you, Desiree. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Well, me. I say us because I'm speaking on behalf of my wife, but yes. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about Lush. Oh, man, where do I where do I begin? Um, Lush is, so as, as people see it, Lush is a luxury balloon company. Um, we are based out of Roseville. Um, we've been serving the greater Sacramento area since 2019. Um, really got our push because of the pandemic, uh, like a lot of vendors um, kind of in this space, really forced us to get outside of our comfort zone. Um, before the balloons, my wife and I owned a videography, slow motion, photo booth business, and all of our um, book of business was in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And as you know, when COVID came about, it literally shut everything down. So we saw you know, years worth of business just stop in a matter of two days. And we're like, holy crud, like, what are we going to do about it? And my wife has always had this creative gene within her. And uh, she was like, you know, we're going to do balloons. And I was like, are you crazy? Like, what are we going to do with balloons? And she had always offered them as kind of like an add on to the photo booth services that we did. Um, but never really was it like the front runner. It was just kind of like, oh, I do this too, if it interests you. But um, anyways, fast forward, pandemic. Um, she's like, we're doing it. And I was like, okay, so I have some SEO development skills and website skills and all of that. So I put together a website and uh, this was March of 2020 and it literally just like took off from there. So something that I had no idea. Um, but yeah, we are a, a husband and wife duo. Um, typically you'll see me in the front, as you mentioned, like my, I'm always dancing, always trying to have a good time, make people laugh. Um, my, my wife is more of the brains behind it and like she, she doesn't like the camera. She doesn't like talking. She's just like, leave me alone. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. But balloons is not all you guys do. No. Um, believe it or not, we have uh, four other businesses. Um, we have marquees. So I'm sure you've seen those light up numbers and letters. Um, those are uh, four feet tall. And we really love adding those to make like an impact statement. If you want to spell out a name or, you know, initials and we do a lot of corporate events, you know, it's now moving into the wedding space, you know, people doing their initials. Um, we also own the still we still have the digital booth company, which is where we initially started in the event space. Um, we own Urban Sips, partly thereof. Uh, it's been a family venture, went into it. Um, Urban Sips is an Italian gourmet soda company. So we have a giant trailer. Uh, we travel all throughout the greater Sacramento area doing events. Um, we also have bar carts. So if you are a, a fan of soda and not uh, coffee, a lot of people are like, you know, I want caffeine, but I'm not into coffee. So that's where the soda comes in. Um, and then we also have um, an event space, which news, which I mean, this is where we're going to announce it. Uh, we're unfortunately closing it. Um, so bittersweet, you know, coming into the new year, but recognizing that um, one, we're spread so thin. I think my wife and I, we are serial entrepreneurs and we're always looking at how can we serve the community? How can we really help? And um, that was something that was on our hearts, you know, two years ago. And then kind of just seeing how things were shaping up and, you know, coming into 2024, we're like, we have to really focus on what, you know, we're good at. And the balloons is kind of the front runner. And so, yeah. Yeah, I love seeing the installations. Um, when I first started seeing them, I just kind of thought they were all the same thing, but there are so many different styles when it comes to the balloons. Can you tell me a little bit about the different styles yeah. and all of that? Absolutely. Um, I'll say our style of balloons is more organic. So that's where the balloons are different sizes. They're really not <clears throat> your typical, I don't like to allude to party city or dollar tree, but it's not like the typical thing that you'll see at a, at a normal store. Um, but there are different artistic styles. So there's the organic style. There's the classic style, which is a lot of balloons are sized the same. You might see, you know, various traditional columns where you'll see at corporate events. But we've decided to take things up a notch um, and really give that wow factor when it comes to balloons and, you know, the impact that we can really transform a space with. Um, I mean, you've mentioned, you know, the Kings and Thunder Valley and, you know, 
doing things at Doco. So they they get it, they see it, and we we love to be a part of it to really show people like what we can do with balloons. Um, and we you know do garlands, we do arches, we do you know columns, we you know do ceiling installations. Um, there's there's so many things that you can do with balloons and like balloon walls and that's just like you name it like you you can kind of think of something with balloons we can make it happen. I love that. <laughs> so what trends are we seeing in 2024 when it comes to balloons? Um, right now, uh, the ceiling is taking over. Um, I love when we're able to work with the ceiling to really transform a space and kind of give like this immersion effect to where you're walking into something. If you've never kind of experienced a um, uh, a ceiling install. You m must be there for the wedding showcase because we were going to give you a little taste um, above our booth. But it's basically like uh, an experience where you have things floating above you and around you. So it's kind of like, wow, like I never thought you could do this with balloons. Um, uh, monochromatic is also coming in trend where uh, things are um, like, for example, if you're having a wedding and the, the details are like white and blush, like going all in on one color. Um, to really give that huge impact as opposed to having multiple colors. Um, and then uh, boho is kind of in and out. And I kind of say that with like the pompous grass and the eucalyptus and kind of intertwining floral somewhat with balloons, which I do love because that's kind of how we're tiptoeing our way into the wedding space. Um, and so I, I, I think we're, we're getting there. We're inching our way uh, eventually. So people kind of start thinking like, you know, I'm getting married. I want balloons at my at my wedding as opposed to like traditionally thinking of flowers. Um, but yeah, I love that. <laughs> I mean, I think I can't forget metallics, though, because oh, they are yes. making such a splash. Yes. This goes in this year. Yeah. We have to talk about metallics because I just love how balloons. Mm hmm. They pop. Well, not the balloons. The colors pop. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The, the colors pop. Um, it, makes a, it makes a huge impact. And when you think like a chromatic or a chrome balloon or a metallic balloon compared to a traditional latex that's, you know, like white or black, you can see the complete contrast, the difference. Um, so I am seeing a lot of that as well, especially as it pertains to like our, our larger installations, um, really taking a color palette and running running with it per se. Yeah, I love that. Um, so you mentioned kind of mixing some of those different uh, textures, mm -hmm. florals, pompous grass, um, greeneries. What, I mean, when you're talking to an, a, a couple and they're like, hey, you know, I, I'm really thinking about this, but I don't know where to start. I don't know like how it would integrate. What do they need? Do they just need to come with you, come to you with those questions? Or is that something that you kind of can foster and cultivate with them? That's a great question. Um, it depends. So I typically have the couples where they're like, I know what I want. This is it. Like, help me work with this. Or it's like, I'm interested, but I don't know if I want it. I don't even know what I want. I don't even know how this conversation is going to shape up. So if I'm going with someone that's, you know, I have a theme, I have a trend, I have a color, whatever it is, like I want to stick to that. It makes it a lot easier, but it's not required. Um, I typically move into that conversation of like what interests you, you know, outside of the decor aspect. Uh, are you, you know, are you uh, a Dooney and Burke type of gal or are you, a, you know, a Louis Vuitton or coach type of gal? Like, what is it? So I know kind of who I'm dealing with. Um, because like the people who are like, you know, I, uh, my wife, she's obsessed with Louis Vuittons, but it's just like, I know her style. I know what, you know, it's going to be more impactful for her, something that's clean, not too overpowering, but something that can, you know, demonstrate artistic ability. Whereas someone who is kind of, you know, more whimsical might give you some more colorful nature, like more colors to play with. Um, and there's really nothing we can't do with balloons, especially to match an environment, whether that's something simple for a statement piece um, where people are being greeted and they could take a photo or if you're transforming an entire space. Um, we once did an event at uh, Granite Bay Golf Club. The entire ceiling was filled with balloons and floral, like jaw-dropping masterpiece creation. Um, but I always help guide people through that because it's such a new thing, a new industry that we're kind of walking into that people aren't 100% sure what to expect. Um, so we have a consultation process that makes it so much easier for people to just kind of like, okay, just, just come with the ideas or even come with like a date. If you just got a date, I can work with that. Um, kind of move from there. I love that. <laughs> What would you tell um, your couples that are maybe like, I don't want balloons. They're just for birthday parties. This is not a birthday party. How, what would you tell them? Because balloons at a wedding are amazing. Thank you. Uh, 
I, I would tell people start somewhere. I think it's really, really challenging when it comes to people visualizing their, and I'm a hand person. I don't know why I talk with my hands. So um, people, uh, people think of their wedding as like the biggest day of their lives. You know, mm -hmm. they spend so much time, so much money, so much energy into it that something new kind of coming into it, something out of the norm. They're just like, I don't know how this will fit. And I want to make sure that I'm happy. Um, so I always kind of encourage people, like if you've never worked with balloons before, typically when it comes to planning a wedding, there are events prior to it. So you have the bridal shower, you have the engagement party, you know, the bachelorette party, whatever it is, we can intertwine balloons into those. So you kind of get a taste. And typically I do have clients that will be um, repeat clients that will start off with something small and then progressively move because they're like, oh, I had no idea that you could do this with balloons, whether it's a simple backdrop. Um a chiara wall is one of those wooden walls that kind of like curved. So those are really, really popular with smaller events. But I always tell people kind of start somewhere if you have an interest at least. Um, but to the people who don't believe that, you know, balloons don't belong at a wedding, I beg to differ. Not just because I own a balloon company, but it's it's allowing people to create an impact beyond flowers. I mean, what you can get, and I'm talking about a cost-effective space, but the amount of balloons that you can get compared to the number of flowers that you can get we far exceed, you know, the volume and the impact that we can create. I can, you know, create a balloon wall that's going to cost, you know, several hundred, if not thousand dollars. But to do that with flowers, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars. And so it's one of those things that also helps, you know, if you're on a budget, not to say that working with a luxury balloon artist is, you know, cheap or anything by that nature, but the impact, the level of kind of what we can do to transform a space if you are, you know, budget friendly or budget conscious, I should say. Um, and, uh, it's fun. It's, I think when everything comes together and set in stone, I've not had one and we've done dozens of weddings and dozens of like intimate events, but I've not had one person ever say like, you know what? I regret getting balloons. Like it was like, man, I'm so glad I did that. And then people are always talking about it. Um, and you know, it's why we're the only company in Northern California that has over 500 five-star reviews. It's yeah. because we take that time to really walk through the process with our clients. We understand their needs. We understand their desires and their vision and really bring it to life. Yeah. I love that you're almost suggesting like a balloon trial as if yes. it were like yes. a makeup trial or, you know, yeah. you do those things, you schedule those out. So why not do a balloon trial exactly. and enjoy having this impact at exactly. all those fun yes. events that you're leading up to your wedding? Yeah. Um, what other types of materials can you mix in with the, the balloons? Mm. I mean, pretty much anything. Uh, I've done disco balls, which is super, super fun um, with uh, with balloons. Um, beyond the flowers, um, it's creative props, so to speak. Uh, the Roaring 20s is a constant request that we get, especially for uh, like corporate parties. Um, but like the feather plumes, those types of things. Um trying to think it's just one of those was like in the moment I was like oh yeah I can add that I can add that um so really nothing is off the shelf like no. anything is possible yeah and we're so kind of like open to creativity that it's like oh I've never heard of that like how can we we're always of the type of just like yeah we can do it like how are we going to do it may not know right off the bat but we'll figure it out um but I haven't gotten any like requests that we haven't been able to like incorporate something you know? yeah I love that <laughs> um what advice would you give to the engaged couples that are starting out their planning journey? Happy wife, happy life, happy spouse, I should say, <laughs> happy, happy relationship. No, it's uh, something that I've learned being with my wife for 10 years now. Um, whatever she wants, she gets. No, <laughs> um, uh, It's being open to, uh, I don't want to put it, in relation to kind of planning the event, I would say it's being open to kind of whatever's out there. I think uh, sometimes it's so easy to kind of stay in kind of a small confined space or just like, this is, this is it. This is what I can do. But think creatively, think, you know, beyond that mold. If you're looking for something that's, you know, different and unique. And I keep speaking on that because balloons are still kind of, they're, they're, they're slowly inching into the, the wedding space. Um, advice for, for couples is just love each other, you know, be there for each other, be that person's best friend. Um, no matter if you, you know, you've been dating and newly engaged after six months or a year, like I've seen it all. I've heard of people getting married, you know, or engaged and, you know, they've only been together for a month, but putting that person first, um, that's been the biggest thing that I've realized being able to, you know, walk with someone who still chooses me every day, which I'm surprised because, uh, you know, anyways, <laughs> um, put that person first and continue to love them. And, uh, 
So when it comes to planning, when is the best time for our couples to reach out to start that consultation process? Great question. I personally would like to be one of the first vendors to be contacted when <laughs> someone is, uh, you know, planning an event. But nine times out of 10, we are the last one. Um, so ideally, in a perfect world, I tell people at least three to six months before your event date. Um, but we're constantly getting requests, uh, you know, sometimes two to three weeks before an event. Um, but don't do that to your vendors because, you know, we we freak out. <laughs> we hate saying no. Um, and if, you know, there's ever a situation where it's like, you know, we have to make it happen, we will. What does an installation install timeline look like when we're calling to like schedule this out and we like have these grand visions? Um, what do we need to realistically like time do we need to give are you talking primarily about the install on site or yes. from like the call the call to like the fruition of well i guess go ahead and answer both those okay. questions because i um, think both are important uh it depends on on the the install that we're going with so if we're doing something like any type of ceiling install we have to do a, a venue walkthrough because we need to see the space of how we're going to be able to rig things and just figure out the logistics um which typically we like to do at least two months in advance and then that also kind of ties into our ordering process. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but there are supply chain nightmares when it comes to balloons. Um, we're in this kind of it space right now where balloons are the, the you know, that that up and rising, you know, up and coming um, thing that people like like to uh, like to use for their events. Um, but when it comes to trying to purchase things, it becomes very, very challenging um, to get resources. So we always like if we're doing something on a larger scale, at least, you know, a month, if not two months to be able to make sure that we can order things appropriately. Because um, the last thing we want to do is call someone a week of and be like, um, we couldn't get this color in or we couldn't get these, you know, types of balloons. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but when it comes to on site installation, one thing about us is that we prepare everything beforehand in our warehouses. So 98 percent of what we have to install is coming ready to install. We aren't, you know, inflating on site. We're not, you know, taking up additional space and kind of fighting with the DJ or the florist because we need space to set up and prep. It's like, nope, like Lush shows up, we arrive, we hit the ground running and we, you know, get everything installed, which also saves time. Um, and depending on the install, like if it's an indoor event, perfect, because, you know, if we have a couple hours beforehand, we can turn a room around, no problem. But if there's outdoor installs, that makes a huge difference. Like we did uh, um, an event for a wedding and it was in July and July. Thankfully, the balloon color was white, but a wedding in July in the Sacramento area, it's hot. <laughs> so you can't show up to this you know, event six hours in advance and put balloons outside because they're going to oxidize and pop. So we had to literally turn this this space in like an hour and a half. But we had a team of 10 that just showed up and just transformed it and went with it. But because of that expertise and us knowing what to do or what works, we're able to, you know, knock things out like that. And if we run into issues, no one ever knows. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, on that, what do's and don'ts are there for balloons? Uh, no dark colors <laughs> in the in the heat. Um, <laughs> it kills me when people ask for, you know, I want black and, you know, navy blue. And I was like, okay, is your indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Okay, what month? August. No. <laughs> <laughs> those colors pop those colors retain so much heat um and the oxidation process essentially it's like when they go from like their natural shine to like dull we don't like that and so if there's an event outdoors we try to do our best to avoid that um but yeah that that was one of my like no-nos like no dark colors um another no-no not too many colors sometimes people get carried away with the color palette like if we're talking about pastels pastel yellow and rose and lavender and mint and blossom and all this stuff and it's just like okay when you get to a point of like reaching five six colors that's typically when we recommend to stop unless you're doing like a rainbow party which i don't foresee that at a wedding but if you're doing a rainbow party it kind of makes sense however if you get into too many colors it loses that luxury tone and it kind of moves more into like the child's birthday party which we want to avoid especially when we're kind of working with people in this space Absolutely. That's a great one. Any <laughs> dues? Uh, yes. Do book your balloons. <laughs> You're going to want balloons. I guarantee you will be wowed and impressed uh, with the quality of work and what we can do, like the craftsmanship, the artistic ability of balloons. Um, 
I will say do your homework beforehand. Uh, it's one thing to research trends, but it's also completely different when like you're looking at flowers as opposed to balloons um, because, you know, the a, a, flo a floral centerpiece compared to a balloon centerpiece is different. Um, and then the colors. One of the challenges with balloons is, yes, balloons are uh, a natural substance. They're made out of latex, which comes from trees. I have this argument all the time. And 100% biodegradable for anyone out there. <laughs> um, but uh, the... The, the tone and colors of like flowers vary greatly to balloons. And so it's kind of like, it's very hard to like color match or to figure out like palettes, which we can do. We have over 90, I think 90, almost a hundred different shades of balloon. So I'm like, you have a color palette, we can, we can find something for it, but just, there's just a different tonality. So I always tell people, do your research. If you do know that you want balloons, it's, I always recommend people show up to our consultation with photos. So if you see something on Pinterest, on, you know, Etsy, on our Instagram or somewhere else, like it always helps to kind of have that um, realization of like what balloons can look like beforehand. Yeah, I love that. And I think that you just made a great point about doing your research, because if you looked on your Instagram, each photo is more beautiful than the last. So oh. <laughs> don't you. be, I feel like you should not be afraid to dream big Amen. Like, because yeah. there's so much that can be done with balloons. Even if you want something simple, just it, it could be more grandiose than you actually think. Absolutely. Yeah. We can, we can step it up a notch. We can, you know, move beyond the whole Amazon DIY kit, which I'm not knocking anybody. I understand if people want to try it. But it's funny the number of times that people will call me and they'll be like, you know, I did a I did an Amazon kit once and never again. Like you guys make it look so easy. And it's just like we're trained professionals. You know, we do this on a daily basis. So we it may look simple, but if you try it, it's kind of one of those things where like, oh, like there's a lot more work that goes into it. Um, but we we really have kind of taken the industry, and I just say relatively to Sacramento, but by by storm, you know, really pushing that mold of like what you can do with balloons. Because before you know, 2020, 2021, we were on the scene, like we really weren't seeing this kind of stuff, at least out here. Um, and then it's taken away. It, it's so inspiring to see you know, so many other artists kind of stepping into the space and seeing what you know we can do collectively as not just an industry, but in you know as as event creators. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> and. Another thing that I think people should remember too is that balloons aren't just one size. Mm -mm. There are so many different sizes, shapes, yep. so many interesting things that can be added into yeah. an arch, a garland, it, those Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can't go wrong with it, whether you're, you know, trying to do something on the smaller scale or you're trying to, you know, cover an entire ceiling. Um, and some people have different tastes where some people want things that are larger and over the top and some a little bit more simplistic. And the beauty about balloons is that we can literally shape them to whatever size you need or, you know, the, the style of what you're looking to achieve. I love that. So, um, I love that you just mentioned that you collaborate with other artists. Yeah. Do you collaborate with like florists and things like that? Yes, um, so awesome. we do. Um, G Rossi is one of our go-tos for all of our floral, um, bloom flower wagon is also, um, I love Erica. She's, if you haven't heard of her, I suggest you, you research her. Um, but she's in Loomis. Um, but I love being able to work with local artists and florists, especially when we get the request to intertwine balloons and floral. Um, and I'm always looking at how to kind of push that again, that image of balloons. And I found that it's a little bit easier when you add the floral organic work into it. That's kind of like, oh, like I can see the vision now um, because it's an easier transition to just like people feel like you're taking away my flowers. It is like, no, <laughs> you can have both. And like, let me show you how. Um, and uh, other, you know, artists in the area, Sack Event Co., Petite Events Co., you know, specializing in uh, event rentals. Um, whether you're going for um, like a more uh, corporate-esque style environment or something that's a little bit more intimate, personal for uh, an engagement party or um, a bridal party, whatever it is. So we're constantly looking at how we can partner with other vendors, not only, to, you know, to accentuate balloons, but to like give people the idea that like you can have multiple vendors that work well together. I love that. Yeah. I mean, we are very lucky that we live here in Sacramento Amen. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have so many great artists and vendors out here that I love when we can collaborate and do something amazing. I agree. And just elevate a couple's vision to something that they didn't know they could achieve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Sean, thank you so much for being here today course, with Desiree. me. Yeah. Um, I 
if you all didn't know, Sean and Lush Balloons are our uh, platinum sponsor for a wedding showcase. And if you have not marked your calendar yet, do it now. Sunday, February 25th, we will be at Cal Expo. You'll need to stop by and see Sean's amazing installation throughout the event. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, Sean. Thank you, Desiree. It's been an honor. Well, I just want to thank all of our sponsors again for uh, this upcoming wedding showcase on Sunday, February 25th at Cal Expo. I want to thank Lush Balloons, who is our platinum sponsor, as well as Real Met Wedding Magazine, our media sponsor. Can't forget our grand prize sponsor, Retreat Salon and Spa. And don't forget when you register your wedding, you are entered to win that grand prize of almost $1,300 worth of services and goodies. And our fashion show sponsors, Carriage House Farms, Our Place Event Space and Kitchen, and we can't forget about our VIP sponsors, White Moon Rustic and Adobo Inc. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you on Sunday, February 25th.